playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's very own. Latino is taking you to another level. Welcome back, my people. Welcome back to episode number 50. Yeah, what's poppin'? I have a very, very special episode for y'all. I have an interview with Brother Crumb. So before we get into the interview, I just want to let you guys know this is part one of our conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, the African influence in Latin America. The main reason why I even brought my brother Crum in is because he's extremely, extremely, extremely more knowledgeable than I am, but extremely knowledgeable on the indigenous culture and the indigenous history of Africa, you know, Europe, Latin America, and all that. So he 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 knows what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? So more than better than have some uh, expert come on you know what i'm saying and he might not think he's an expert but i see him as such i see him as an expert i see him as a professor you know so this is basically uh this episode is basically like a teaching moment for all of y'all you know what i'm saying for all of those naysayers who don't think um latin america had um no african influence for those of you who think that African um, influence was never in Latin America and there was no such thing as African people in America, this is for all of you guys, so you guys can learn. You feel what I'm saying? Are you learning? <laughs> you know? So this is for all of y'all. And the main reason is because ever since I put out a video going against, you know, Antonio Cristina, AKA, you know, uh, Butthead from Beavis and Butthead, I've been getting all these comments of, yo, I don't know what you're talking about. There's never no African influence in Latin America. There's no such thing as Negros with Latin people and all this other bullshit of all these idiotic dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? All this bullshit. So what more better way than shut these motherfuckers up historically with some evidence? You know what I'm saying? It's not only with evidence, with someone that knows what they're talking about. So when they look it up, they're like, oh shit, I better shut the fuck up. But anyway, without further ado, here's the interview with me and the brother Crumb. Hope you guys enjoy it. And so today, I have a very special, special, special episode. I have my brother, Crumb. What's poppin', Crumb? All right, all right, all right. Peace. Ashe, Islam, Rahubet, respect. Brother, I greet you. Oh, uh, hola. <laughs> I greet you in your respective language. Um, I am your brother, your humble brother, Crumb. I'm on uh, Instagram under Crumb TV and, of course, Crumb Snatcher. And my brand is Crumb TV. Uh, and I'm just uh, appreciative and glad to let you, uh, appreciative and glad that you've let me on the platform, brother. Thank you so much. Oh. I, I I love and I'm following. I don't follow a lot of people, but I'm following Radical Latino. Oh, good looking, bro. Good looking, good looking. Um, the the reason why I brought Crumb in is because he is a very interesting person. Um, somebody actually tagged me in um in one of your videos to just you know say hey, just look at this dude. Um, see what you think or whatever the case is and since somebody tagged me in one of your videos dude I've been following from day one. You know what I'm saying? Um, from the I think it was an old Instagram post You said something about white people smelling like dogs or something like that And I was like wait for real this is something serious like something for like real and I did my little small research and I was like oh shit this is actually kind of, you know what I'm saying? So from there, I've just been following you, bro. And, you know, listening to everything you got to say and stuff. But the reason why I got him in is because, you know, he's very, very well-versed, well-educated on the indigenous culture and the people of indigenous descent, um, especially in, in, you know, North America. 
in South America. So that's the reason why I brought him in. So, um, Crumb, can you tell us a little bit about yourself so I w- so my listeners can know a little bit about you? Well, I consider myself to just be a conscious person, and a lot of people, even within what is the so-called conscious community, don't even like that term. But for lack of a better word, I consider myself to be, you know, one of the leaders or the louder voices within the conscious community. And I just speak on information that's been hidden, you know, breaking stuff down. Um, and uh, I, I really got my start on Facebook just speaking out loud, not being afraid to speak the truth. You know, our generation, it, it, you know, just like, you know, there was a generation for the civil rights, a generation for World War One and Two. Uh, you know, our generation is the generation that that woke up the world, and I'm I'm one of the leaders in that. Mm, all right. And what made you? What where does the name Crumb come from? Well, I started out on Facebook, and I kept changing my name. And then, you know, because Facebook changes all the time. Yeah. And then they made this thing where you couldn't change your name because I wasn't going to put my real name up there. Uh, And they was like, no, you can't change your name. And at first it was, you know, you could only change it one time. But then they they changed it. You can only change it every six months. And when I started blowing up, because I had, I think my name was uh, Chill Clinton, um, Style Pacino. Not Al Pacino. Style Pacino. Pacino. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Um, You know, but uh, there was a couple others. And when they made that rule, I got stuck at Crumb Snatcher. And at that point, I was just banging every single day. But at that, you know, live wasn't out at that point. Yeah. They only had where you could just post. And I was posting just like... uh, Little tidbits, just little crumbs. You know, this one dude was doing this thing called Food for Thought. Uh, he, he, but he would. Ha- this was back when nobody was hashtagging. Yeah. You know, hashtag. I, I didn't even know what a hashtag was. Uh, and he would hashtag FFT. And I'm like, damn, what does that mean? And uh, it turns out it had meant uh, Food for Thought. Mm. And I'm like, damn. Well, I don't. I don't got Food for Thought, but I got a couple crumbs here and there. And you know, I just for I was crumb snatcher and I was dropping crumbs and. Uh, it just kind of grew from there. That makes a lot of sense. That ma- so, how did you get like well, like educated with everything that you're saying? Because, truth be told, like some of the stuff that you say, and I'll be like, wait a minute, is that for real? And when I research it, it comes out to be true. So, how did you get well versed in um in all the knowledge that you have? I had worked in a security job, so I applied for the job, and there was two positions, one at the front desk, one at the back desk. The one at the front desk paid more, so I wanted that job. However, what I didn't know is the one at the back desk was better. Even though um, it was the bag, less pay, it wasn't as much responsibility, mm. and I had more freedom. Mm. So while I, And I worked a graveyard shift, so it was just nothing to do. So I think for like maybe two years I worked that job and it was graveyard shift nothing to do so uh, we had that we had computers now with the computers the guy whose job I was taking I lied to you not I can't I can't make this stuff up he got fired for you know because at that point they had full access to everything on the computers he got fired for watching uh, gay porn whoa so then I come in. whoa now, here's why here's why that's important why would I even mention that because by the time I got to the job, in the back, less pay, on graveyard shift, uh-huh. nothing to do, the computer. So, like, there was a, there was a computer there. Yeah. And you could only access, because of the, the fuck-up shit he did, you could only access educational shit. Wow. There was literally nothing else to do but read. And for two years, I just sat on the computer and read it. And, and for the most part, it was a lot of Wikipedia Wikipedia articles. So it, it'll be an article, but it'll be just some short little whatever. But the family talks shit about you. You go on Wikipedia, Wikipedia will take your ass down a fucking rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. 
Cause you read it and you you, 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 you see yeah. that blue hyperlink, really, you're like, okay, I'm reading. Yeah. Oh, okay, boom. Let me hit that's that. Probably, that's probably that's probably how type. that's probably how he went to gay porn. He started off watching like cat videos and then no, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> no, but but yeah. So you were just reading and just getting well versed on a lot of things. Yeah, I mean because. I might choose what I was reading, but a lot of times it was just like, I might just go back and finish what was going on, what was I reading yesterday, or uh, if you go to Wikipedia, they have a homepage, and they'll be like, hey, today we're just talking about this. So, Uh. you know, on some fucking random Tuesday, I'm reading about Blue Cabbage. Who the fuck reads about Blue? Ain't nothing. It's Tuesday night. Yeah, I'm at work. Yeah, graveyard ship in the back. Yeah, and I don't get access to nothing but really the news and Wikipedia. Yeah, and at this time we're talking about like like when you know no iPhones and and cell phones weren't really all that advanced with like you know YouTube apps and all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even if it was available, I I, I could I, I couldn't afford none of, nothing like that. Yeah. You know, at that time I was I was living with my grandma. You yeah. know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get back on my feet. You know, I ain't got no money. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, it, I'll take yeah, the yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I feel you. I feel you. So, um, what what made you start your platform? What made you just say, yo, fuck all that. Let me put a camera on and start, you know, dropping some crumbs. You know what I'm saying? Dropping some jewels, you know? Yeah, you know, just like you said, I'm going to put the camera on. I, uh... I uh, I was on Facebook. Facebook was the biggest platform, was the only platform I had at the time. And I was just going hard up there. And by the time that, um, that um, Facebook Live came out, I think this was in response to YouTube because YouTube didn't get big until that Super Bowl where Janet Jackson titties came out. Yeah. That's yeah. when YouTube got big. So once they got big, then Facebook started doing Facebook Lives. I jumped on the Facebook Live and the shit fucking exploded. Mm. And I'm like, well, let me, you know, he was like, you need to go to Instagram. You need to go to Instagram. I was scared of Instagram because all my videos was like an hour long and Instagram you know, at the time, there was no IGTV. You could only yeah. go on that, you know, because, like, when it, Instagram first came out, it was 15 seconds. The videos were only 15 seconds, and I couldn't fuck with that. Yeah. So then, you know, I'm like, you know, Crumb Snatcher has a lot to say. I can't, I can't, you know, that's why I wasn't fucking with Twitter. 180 characters, I, I've got more than 180 characters to say. Yeah. I got a whole fucking hour yeah. to talk <laughs> some shit out this page. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was intimidated by 15 minutes. So then they changed the shit to one minute. You know, and right now they got IGTV, but the videos are typically just one minute videos. So I, I like, fuck it, I'll go on an Instagram. I, and matter of fact, no, I'm sorry. I didn't go on, I think I, I don't remember if it was Instagram or YouTube first, but uh, no, it was YouTube first. So um, the reason I, I had spread out after, after Instagram Live came, I'm sorry, excuse me, after Facebook Live came out, every, after a while, after I exploded, yeah. I started fucking with, fucking with the feed. So, kick, kick, getting kicked off. You know, go, go yeah. watch my old shit on YouTube. I'm like, yo, fuck, fuck Facebook. I'm yeah. not going on Facebook no more. Yeah. I swear <laughs> to God, Mark Zuckerberg can just, you know, just going in because they was fucking with me. So I'm like, you know what? Facebook is fucking with me. I was on my Kanye shit. They, they don't want me to be great. I yeah. was on my Kanye shit. Yeah. So I said, they was like, yo, go to YouTube. I'm like, fuck it, I'll go to YouTube. I went to YouTube. You know, and my shit just really got to pop it over there. So then um, I'm like, fuck it, I'll go to Instagram. The Instagram, you know, at the time, because Facebook invented, well, created Instagram. So there was a button, and I haven't seen them. It might still be there. I just haven't seen it anymore. But at one point in time, it was a big, clear button, invite all your Facebook friends. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. You know, and I had, you know, my biggest following is on Facebook. So the day I opened my Instagram, I had like 2,000 followers mm. that first day. So it was like, oh, shit, you know. So the platforms, 
one just kind of like people are like, yo, go on Instagram, go on Instagram. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to go. And I don't know if you ever heard of a guy by the name of Yurima, Yurima Karama. I was fucking with him back in the back in the day. He was yo, doing that a shit called Morning Call. Yeah, that name sounds familiar. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, he's he's jumping like Jordan. Um, oh, word. Damn. Yeah, he's doing he's doing big things on the internet right now. And, and, oh, and shout, out, it, shout out to him then. Shit. Yo, yeah, shout out Yurima Karama. So him and I were, uh, you know, uh, you know, I was kind of following him, and he was doing this shit called Morning Coffee, and uh, you know, he kind of like, yo, come on over to Instagram. Like, all right, you know, just came on to Instagram, and that's that's kind of how I I, I even because I was scared. I ain't gonna lie to him. Like, oh, man, I can't. Yeah, I'm good on Facebook, but ain't nobody fucking with me nowhere else. Yeah. Like, damn. All right, y'all fucking with me over here. You fucking with me over there, and then just kind of complete that story. We go on to the next question, but you know, uh, Black Panther had came out. Oh. You know, I was doing my thing. I was doing my thing, but I Crumb Snatcher took off when Black Panther came out. Mm. That's when I kind of I got a little bit of internet celebrity. You know, you got A list celebrities, B list yeah. celebrities. I think I was at like at that point. I we I had reached like S. I'm an S list celebrity. <laughs> I'm not even up to. I'm nowhere yeah. close to an A list, but yeah, yeah. I, think like I don't S. think I even have a letter, so don't, don't even you worry about what? that. So you good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm a nobody, so no, nah, you good. You're a celebrity. Yo, my honor to have you on. You feel me? Right. <laughs> now, nah, but I think right I think there. you want to know something crazy. I think like almost everybody okay. started out on Facebook, like me. I didn't start the radical Latino on Facebook. I was on my you know my personal. Thing, you know going against white supremacy daily you know what i'm saying and especially right. when trump was campaigning that's when i started going in heavy and you know spewing mm. all these anti you know anti-white supremacist you know things like you know exposing it and i started seeing a lot of my friends friends who followed me because i was following them you know what i'm saying just you right. know start either leaving or debating me and I was just in and out with them, sh with them shits. Like, yo, that's not true. Blah, 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 blah. No, that's not true. Blah, blah, blah. How can you, you know what I'm saying? And then I was going right. in and out and in and out. And then just one day, you know, I said, I was like, yo, I should, you know, I should actually, you know, do a platform and do something, you know, you know what I'm saying? But the thing about Facebook is whenever you mention white supremacy or you go against it, they shut your shit down. My shit was getting shut right. down literally every other i shit you not every other thursday or every other sunday it was just like mm. yo you gotta delete this because um it goes against our terms or something like that terms of service or whatever right Go, you got it's mm -hmm. going against our terms of service and you gotta delete it you know and i won't delete it and then until i'm like ah fuck fuck it let me just delete it you know what i'm saying and you will constantly right. happen constantly happen constantly happen the last time that i actually stopped and i said I'm stop fucking with Facebook. You know, like I got a radical Latino joint uh, for, you know, Facebook, but I don't even like interact with it. You know what I'm saying? I just leave it there. But when the last time I start, I stopped fucking with Facebook was when, what was it? When, oh, it was when, um, the, the Dallas shooting happened. Remember the Dallas shooting? And then they were talking about black lives matter was, you know, shooting cops and all this other bullshit. Right. So I went on a Facebook group, right? And I started attacking everybody. That's not true. This and this and this. There was a there was dudes up in there calling black folks animals and and you know, a a, a good black person's only a dead one. You know what I'm saying? You know crazy shit. Right. So I'm just over there just boom 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 and then they suspended my shit like for a good what was it? For a good week. I couldn't even get back on for a good week. And I said from there, I was like, fuck Facebook. I'm not even doing nothing on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I just started right. dealing with Instagram, even though, you know, Facebook, you know, they got Instagram, but I, uh, I, I kept that, you know, at least on Instagram, I found that you could, you could skate a little bit more. You feel me? You could skate right. a little bit, just a little bit more, you know? But that's when I just went on Instagram and Twitter and I just started, you know, heavy. And then I was like, yo, let me just start. You know what I'm saying? But I feel you on that. Like, I think almost everybody started, you know, like actually exercising their beliefs on Facebook. 
Right, right. All facts, all facts. You know what I'm saying? So what was one of your biggest challenges that you found coming out? What was one of your, 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 your biggest your biggest hurdles? Uh, you know, ignorance. Ignorance, you know, that that learning curve, just trying to figure shit out. Mm. Um, and it was just like, damn, if I knew then what I do now, um, you know, I was just always late on the draw. And I just always felt late. Like, damn, I should have been doing that before. Yeah. You know? Um, now I've kind of got things... I've got people helping me, you know. I think the help is the biggest thing. You yeah. need to make a, you know, people, everybody want to do it by themselves and, you know, so on and so forth, and that's cute, but we're stronger together. Mm. And mm. I I did it alone. Well, a matter of fact, you know, I would say my, my biggest thing was even doing it for myself. It, you know, here, let me get a little personal with you. I started out doing doing uh, marketing. Mm. I was doing uh, marketing and project management. So this this is how it literally went. I I started rapping when I was a kid, mm. teenager, and well, I was in this little rap group. And when I said for us to kind of market our no matter of fact, I said, well, down there they called it day labor. Up here we call it um, uh, uh, a cipher. Uh, Temp agency. Oh, 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 my fault. Uh-huh. No, you good. Uh, you know, so I said, listen, we just work at the little temp agency shit, the little day labor shit, and w- once a month, we all just put $50 in, and now we have a marketing budget. You know, they kicked me clean out the group. Damn. And, you know, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Look, we want to rap, and that we ain't trying to work and have no fucking budget. You doing too much. Damn, so, for real? It is what it is. You know, everybody just raps. That's why, you know, niggas, well, what I make it? Niggas is all you do is rap. You got to do a little bit more than just rap with your oversimplistic ass. <laughs> I'm just going to rap. Like, nigga, no, you got to do some extra things outside of rapping. Stop yeah. playing. But anyway, so um, I had started with this clothing line, and, uh, you know, they wasn't rocking with me, ultimately. And then, uh, you know, then I uh, that clothing line went and turned into a um, uh, TV show. Mm. You know, they, you know, and I was doing marketing for the TV show. And then I uh, worked with a, uh, you know, just different organizations. I was really putting in a lot of work for different organizations. And from where I sat, it just felt like it was fucking me over. So then I was like, you know what? All the energy that I'm putting into all these assholes who are fucking me over every step of the way, either they tell me my ideas are dumb or they taking my share, you know, what have you. Uh, I'm just going to do all this shit for myself. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to lead no fucking horse to water and beg him to drink. It, it, that's yeah. not going down. Yeah, that's true. Anymore. Anymore. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to do it for myself. And, they, and then I applied you know, my marketing and project management background, what, what I did for others, I did for myself. Mm. 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 So you use your self-knowledge to help yourself out. That's what's up. Right. I mean, you know, it's it's been a long and hard journey, but... I've had some serious milestones. I did a GoFundMe, and I, you know, you can go look at it. It's called Waking Sleeping Giants. Mm. And it's still up. I said, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Go, I said, go, go out, go, everybody, go right now to the GoFundMe. What was it called? Well, well, the only reason I would say not to do the GoFundMe is because I don't. I'm not gonna say it was a big challenge, but it was a little bit of a mistake. I probably should not have went through GoFundMe. Okay. But yes, the GoFundMe is still up, and it's called Waking Sleep and Giants. I initially set a goal for three thousand, and it it uh, went up to six thousand. Oh, okay. You know, and that you know you can see that up there. Uh, so you know, there's a paper trail. It's not like I'm just making it up. Yeah. However, the the only problem with the GoFundMe is that you know there's a significant amount of tax 
that you're going to oh, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, you know, people donating a dollar, you only see a 60 cent. Uh, and that's the same thing right now that I'm experiencing with YouTube. You know, um, they have a feature when you go live on YouTube called Super Chat. Now, what the family, you know, may not know is uh, YouTube taxing 60%. Yep. So, so if a person donates you a dollar, all you want to see 35. is 40 cents. I'm like, listen. 40, 35, yeah. Right. They they taking an arm and a leg. So at this point, I, I tell people, don't 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 donate to the GoFundMe anymore because they're taking too much of the money. Don't do the uh, just cash at me, cash at me. That, I think you should cash do the cash app. app. Yeah, be like, yo, just right. cash at me. You know, dollar sign that crumb, whatever, whatever, whatever. Do your thing. Right. I, I like, somebody told me to do the 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 cash app. But I was like, I, I'll do. I'll probably think about doing that some other time, but not now. But um, yeah, I think Cash App is way better. There's other like little things, but yeah, YouTube that super chat shit, man. Listen, they right. they be they be raping folks, man. Rape, rape. Thank you, thank you. They be raping no Vaseline. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, they be raping <laughs> folks. Like, I remember, I remember one of my homies. He had like he just got a thousand, you know, subscribers or whatever the case is. He does like little like commentary videos or whatever the case is and he started you know monetizing he went live and i think on live that you know he uh he ended up getting 300 dollars, right them 300 dollars, right. those 300 dollars actually came up to like 225 i was like damn yeah. god damn See? so they took 75 dollars out of you that's insane but that's crazy you, you know what i'm saying like yeah you two be raping folks you know but um so the main reason why I got crumb here, right, is because I'm just going to follow on, you know, is because recently for all of my listeners, if you guys follow me on YouTube, go follow me, The Radical Latino, you know what I'm saying? But I made a video basically um, going at a certain YouTuber. I'm not even going to mention the dude's name, but y'all can go check that out on my YouTube, right? Um, because he, that certain YouTuber started to, you know, say a bunch of like anti-black, you know, rhetoric. And this person is Dominican. And the reason why he got his following is because he went on YouTube and, you know, he wanted to talk about his Dominican DNA test. He ended up finding out he's 72% white. Okay, cool. Which most Latinos... You know, it varies from 80 to like 30. You know what I'm saying? Because let's be honest, we all got raped by the Spaniards. You feel me? Right. So, yep. you know, he went 72%, you know, white, 15% sub Saharan African. And I believe the other is native, you know, from, you know, Dominican Republic, right? So mm -hmm. basically, he's 22% non white. You know what I'm saying? He's 22% whatever, whatever point, whatever, non-white. But he just grabbed on to that whole, if I'm 72% white, that means I'm 100% white. Phenotypically, he doesn't look white. Um, So he, he would just go on these, you know, anti, you know, black rants, right? So mm -hmm. I made a whole video breaking everything down. Best believe... This is one of actually my challenges that I always see. Best believe that video got more dislikes than likes. From <laughs> yeah, and it was all from the Latin community. I got comments like, "What? Yup, I got comments like, you don't know what you're talking about. Black is not in our DNA. I got, um, you should educate yourself in the Latin community. I got." You should educate yourself in the history of Latin America, blah, blah, blah. I got, we're mixed. All this other crazy other bullshit, right? So right. the main reason why, that's my biggest hurdle. You know, Latin folks coming at me saying that I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? When I got historical facts to back my shit up, they just go, no, I don't, that's not true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lie. Shut up. <laughs> you feel me? But right. the that's what my biggest hurdle is, right? And the reason why I got Crumb here today is because he is extremely well-versed in history, 
and indigenous history. And when we were talking, you know, off mic, he told me he did extensive research on Incas, Mayans, Aztecs, so on and so forth. And if you guys do not know that Africa influenced the world, Africans were the first people to circumnavigate the globe. And that the indigenous people in Latin America, Central America, North America, were all black folks. And yeah, their, you know, their, their, their uh, um, identity by white supremacy changed by saying, okay, they're indigenous people and these are black. You know what I'm saying? That identity right. changed and all that. But still, they were black folks, right? If everybody still doesn't believe you guys Google similarities in artifacts from Latin America and Africa or Egypt, and y'all will see pyramids that look the same artifacts that look the same and all that. But I don't want to sit here and say the same old thing that my listeners or some of my naysayers always listen to. I want somebody else who's well versed in that. So to go on, tell us a little bit, Mr. Crumb. Teacher, because you're the teacher right now. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to learn. Tell us the African influence in Latin America, Teacher Crumb. <laughs> well, okay, absolutely. I would do as you say. However, you know, I want to kind of backtrack just for two seconds. Yeah, no problem. You know, I want the family, because I try my best to be humble. I want the family to know that I do not profess to be a professor, and I don't claim to be a teacher. I have coined or uh, labeled myself as a master student. You know, um, I am a student of life, and I'm in no hurry to graduate. I am still learning, and that is the key, you know. The, the, the smartest man knows how much he doesn't know. You know, a fool thinks he knows it all. Mm -hmm. A smart man knows that there's a lot. The, 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 more you, the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. So, uh, I, I am a master's student. So with that said, you know, I have done my tutelage to a, to a large degree on the connection between Africa and South America. And let me, you know, of course we can go back, but we don't even have to go very far back. Let me just kind of go over some simple stuff with the family. Now, the only reason I deal with Wikipedia, because anybody can edit it, you know, let me put that out there, that caveat. Yes, anybody can edit it, but when they have numbers behind them, those sentences with numbers behind them have, ref, you know, they have reference points. So you can go away from uh, Wikipedia. I think about 65% of all the references on Wikipedia come from Encyclopedia Britannica. So with all due respect, Wikipedia is simply just Encyclopedia Britannica online. That's really all it is, family. Gotcha. You know, and the only articles that, that get edited and it's some bullshit is, you know, the, 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 the articles we already know is going to be fucked with. The Martin Luther King said, you know, and a lot of those articles get locked. If people keep editing, like when it, when the Jeffrey Epstein came out, there was a little note up there saying, "Hey, uh, I asked I asked some people trying to edit this shit, you know." So that will that let you know, you know, it's, it's no secret. But you know, the regular shit, nobody's editing and fucking with them because it's just like nobody's interested to that to that degree, unless some shit happens in the news or something. But it tends not to happen. So without uh, further ado, uh, on on Wikipedia it says Brazil is cited as having the largest black population of any country outside of Africa. Okay? Mm. Let me just, for, for the people in the back, this is just, you know, this ain't even like 
something we got to look up on the internet. We all know that already. But for for the listening audience who still all oh, prove it, well, you know, let's just put it within black and white. Brazil is cited as having the largest population of any country outside of Africa. Brazil's the most, uh, and, and, and uh, 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 Brazil is, if if I am correct, I believe the biggest country in South America. Yeah, is, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, you're you're correct. Okay, so the biggest country in South America has more black people than any other place on the planet, other than Africa. Is that what we're saying? Like y'all talking all black people in America, bitch. It's more black. Black people ain't even in America. Like talking about. Mm-hmm. You 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 go to America. Uh, the, the the biggest minority is 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 uh, white folks, Latinos. Oh, that too. Yeah, yeah, Latinos. Yeah. No, no, no. White folks are the biggest majority. Yeah. All right. The biggest minority in the United States of America is not black people. Are Latinos? Black people. I'm sorry. Are oh, Latinos, right? Yes, sir. Mm. The biggest minority in America is Latinos. Black people not in no fucking America. What are y'all talking about? Yeah. And you, black you, people, you uh, think that twelve percent of black folks in America? You think that's true? Because I don't. No, 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 no. Now keep in mind, brother. You want to talk about the connection between uh, 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 Africa, aka black people, and Latinos? Mm-hmm. Are y'all fucking with me right now? Y'all know, goddamn. Let me, brother. We dealing with the census. What is the census, Crumb? Glad you asked. The census is where these folks knock on your goddamn door and ask you who in the fucking house. Mm-hmm. And by law, you don't have to answer your door. So now, all my black Africans, all my Latino and Hispanic family, y'all know goddamn well I don't care what race you are. When them niggas knock on your door, you're going to tell a fucking lie because there's nothing they can do about it. It's just a fucking questionnaire, and you can say no. Mm-hmm. Hey, who's living in the house? Bitch, it's just me here. It's just me. Mm-hmm. So there's a 15 margin. There's a 15% margin of error within all things. In addition to that, you know as well as I know, them, them people come knocking on my goddamn door in your door keep a brother do you know they they do the census every 10 years mm-hmm. 2020 next year for, for for the listening audience who think we fucking around next year for all you people who got a short ass sh- short term memory and you can't remember back in uh, uh, 2010 but in 2020 them niggas gonna come knock on your door uh, uh, boo boo they're gonna come. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Who the fuck is that? It. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm with the U.S. Census. We're just collecting data. How many people are 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 living in your house? What the? Who? How, nah. Nah. Uh. Uh-uh, uh. 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 I'm not. Uh, I'm. Uh. Uh. You know what? The person who uh, lives here ain't here right now. All right, yeah. okay. Yeah, exactly. And they'll leave. <laughs> but two days later, because keep in mind, the more information they, co- they collect, the more money they get. Them, them fucking door knockers, every 10 years, you will see them commercials. Hey, the census is hiring. Go knock on doors in your neighborhood. Yep. Brother, I, I tried to do census one year, but at that time I failed the drug test. I tried to do the census one year. Brother, they was paying twenty two fucking dollars an hour. Jesus Christ! You run a sweep through that fucking neighborhood all week. Same person, next three days. Yeah, I'm with the U.S. Census. Is the person here? You know what? Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm the person. I'm the only one here. There's nobody else here but me. And I'm not giving you no more information than that. Stop knocking on my fucking door. Don't come around here no more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now, <laughs> you talking about the population of black people? In America, that's based off the U.S. Census, brother, and we don't fuck with them. You talk about the population of Latin of of Hispanics in America, that's based off the fucking uh, uh, census. Yeah. With all this shit that happened this year with this fucking this fucking ice bullshit, 
You think Latinos and, and Hispanics is going to answer the door for y'all and tell y'all who in the fucking house? We know goddamn well it's more than 13% of us over here, and we know it's goddamn well more than 26% of y'all over here. Mm. That's just what they can count. Mm. Mm. You want to talk about the connections? Ne- next year, oh, I, I don't know. I don't agree with him. God damn it, next year when they knock on your door, let me see what your ass do. Let me see what you do then. Well, he was right. We do got a connection because when they knock on the door, I'm not fucking answering it. <laughs> but anyway, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Yeah, let me yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the connection. So, black people not even in America. Black people in South America. Okay. The 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 painstaking majority of Latinos, most Latinos ain't no fucking Dominican, uh, uh, Dominicans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most Latinos in Latin America, the biggest fucking country, they're from Africa. Yep. This ain't even like no fucking, I wonder, or, no, you can't debate that. Yep. That's not even up for debate right now. Nobody, nobody's debating that. Nobody's saying there are more Latinos that look Latino than look black. <laughs> we all know that. Stop playing with yep. us. We know that. Yep. <laughs> it's a, yep. Oh, we got to go back into a thousand years ago and prove some shit. Okay, w- w- we can look at the artifacts, but let's talk about right goddamn now. Today. What is today's date? Hold on. Hold on. Let me pull up the fucking calendar. Today, August 18th, there are more Latinos in Latin America that are straight from Africa than anywhere else in the world other than Africa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anybody, hey guys, you know what, because this is my thing. For the listening audience who don't know Crumb, when I tell y'all some some, some basic shit, your, your silly ass should already know, and now you just looking mystified in the face, you know, your ass got that fluoride stare. That's when mm. I yelled this out. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> All the Latinos from Africa, nigga, surprise! Uh-huh. <laughs> nigga, you late. Stop playing with me. Latinos with your African ass. Mm-hmm. All you Latinos with your African ass. And I be telling so them, I be telling them, listen, you could be light as shit. Once you take that DNA test, best believe you are not a hundred percent Spaniard. Best believe you're not a hundred percent white, because the most light skinned person, Latin or, or Latina, or whatever, you know, the majority will probably have within sixty five or seventy five percent Spaniard. The rest is gonna be black. You feel me? And now, yeah, continue. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. You're absolutely right. But see, this is the thing. I'm going to walk you through history, and we're going to start with today and go backwards. Mm-hmm. See, you, brother, and I'm not seeing what you're doing. you itching right now, and you trying to take it back. Mm-hmm. You're trying to take it back to Cortez and the Conquistadors. I, I, I get it. <laughs> but before we go back that far, I'm not, I'm not ready to go back that far right now. We got we to gotta go a little bit more into current day. Okay. Let's go with the start of slavery. Okay. You say, all right, Crump, how did these uh, Africans become the majority of Latinos in Latin America? How did that happen, Crump? Well, easy. Christopher Columbus, quote unquote, discovered America. Family, sit your silly ass down. Christopher Columbus, with your Hispanic ass, went to the island of Hispaniola, okay? He never set foot in America. Mm -hmm. He landed on the island that was known at that particular time as Hispaniola, with your Hispanic ass. Mm -hmm. That's That's where the whole shit started at. 1492, Columbus sails the ocean blue. He didn't end up in India. Oh, well, he called them Indians. He called the area West Indian. Wow. So now the Caribbean is the West Indies. 
Because mm. he didn't go to America. He went to the Caribbean. Mm. To the island now known half as uh, IAT or Haiti mm -hmm. and the other half, the Dominican Republic. Mm. Mm. There was no such... Now, prior to that, they were the Arawaks. Mm, explain the ex ex they explain the who they are. Expl uh, explain who they are. The Tainos and the Arawaks. Explain who they are. Now I'm I'm not quite ready to go that far back. Okay, okay. That that that's prior to Christopher Columbus. We still talking about Columbus right now. Okay. I just wanted to kind of mention that real quick, but right. I, I know, but I, I see you, brother. You're trying to go <laughs> fucking back. You're trying to go back, but I'm not gonna let them go that far back in history. We we we're gonna walk slow. All right. <laughs> So now, Christopher Columbus gets to the island, and this is the first time anybody has ever left Europe because they thought the world was flat and you and you would go over. So Christopher Columbus, um, he he goes over there, uh, and he's sponsored by Spain. Mm. Remember, everybody thinks the world is flat. They're not fucking with him right now. I'm not going to give you nothing. Mm -hmm. What were the ships that he took? The Santa Maria, the uh, the uh, the Pinta, the, uh, the 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 I don't know what the fucking name of them. Me ships either. Was, but I, it was all. I only knew. I only know Spanish one, thing. like uh, Santa Maria. That's the only one I know. The other ones, I'm like uh, Quavo, Takeoff, Cardi. I don't know. I don't know. The, I don't know the. Uh, I don't know the other two. I don't know the other two. I never. I, 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 you know what I mean? But it was some Spanish shit. It was, yeah. It was. It, it, yeah. It was Spain. When, 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 when we look at Europeans, because keep in mind, Spain is in Europeans. When we look at Europeans, the Spanish are the most are the most ballsy. They're the ones to go first. Yeah. So you know, now he is an Italian. You know, uh -huh. uh, 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 you know, when when we're dealing with Columbus Day, the Italians are going to celebrate that. He's mm -hmm. an Italian. But keep in mind, this language of of, of Spanish comes out of Italy. Mm. The, language, the Spanish language comes out of Italy. Who's bringing it over here? An Italian is bringing... Who's bringing over the Spanish shit? An Italian. Who's bringing over the Spanish language? It's coming out of Italy. You know, so now we have this Italian who's, who's fucking, with the, fucking with the Spanish. The Spaniards. They come over here with them fucking boats. And um, that, that's, that's where we first see this, this uh, beginning to a narrative of rape. Hmm. Now, keep in mind, nobody's fucking with him. So the only people he can get to man the ships, this is a death mission, brother. I want you to be clear about that. Columbus at the time, this was no less than a death sentence. So the only people who's going to go with him is fucking prisoners who were already set to die. Because mm. they believe they're going, he's going over the, they gave him the ships. You know what, you made a good argument. However, we still believe you're going to die. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, here's your crew. Some some fucking people, some uh, uh, people who they don't have a life anyway. They were going to be in prison forever, and we were going to put them in a guillotine or some shit. Yeah. Take them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a death sentence anyway. These were some fucking thugs, gangsters, rapists, yep. child molesters, murderers. We called them, we called them Chomo. Chomo. Mm -hmm. he, he had a motley crew of some real. Uh, uh, dirty, dirty dudes. So they came over here and they started raping everything on two feet. Mm. You know, so the people, you know, they, they, we have somehow as a people, people, our culture has been manipulated to where we, we, we celebrate this side of the family. Like, uh, you know, when we're dealing with culture and heritage, this may not be something that we should be so quick to embrace. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Your child come out fucked up. That's the Christopher Columbus side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with Jose? It's the fucking Christopher Columbus side. Yeah. Yeah. That's yo. That's that's that Christopher. <laughs> yeah. The real Spanish side in his family. They're good people. You know. Those people have been around for a long time. They've lived in peace for a long time. Mm. So now, 
um, Christopher Columbus comes over here and uh, he doesn't come uh, first initially he doesn't come fucking up because the first time I think they give him like one ship he's only got one ship there's not a lot of them they can't really do nothing but one of the tribesmen that they came in contact with gave him a gold bangle mm. so he that's all he needs he gets the he don't rape nobody he don't kill nobody he don't fuck shit up he comes in peace he you know they give him a gift because they're good people these are good people these are, you know they, they they might have their little battles but nobody you know we don't see all out wars at that particular time there's no genocide at that particular time somebody might have to die from your camp or my camp but shit happens but nobody's you know Weapons of mass destruction is just not going down within that particular type of culture. Mm. However, you know, these people, they've got to leave Europe. They've got black plague, you know, uh, rat infestation, mm-hmm. you know, the, uh, the, the, the average lifespan is like you, you only live to like 42. Mm-hmm. Shit, 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 you know, shit was bad in the old world. They had to come to the new world. So now uh, he brings the gold bangle back. To, to uh, 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 that Spanish woman, I think is Queen Queen uh, <clears throat> um, Elizabeth or something like. Not yeah. probably. I'm sure it's absolutely not Elizabeth. Uh, Isabella. Okay. Queen Isabella. It's her. It's, it's Isabella. He takes the gold bangle back, and she says, "And uh, with this, we shall take over the new world. With this gold, we shall take over the goddamn mm-hmm. new world." So then they give Columbus five more ships. That's when he comes over here and wrecks shop. Oh, when he comes over shit. here to the island of Hispaniola, he's coming over to take slaves. He's coming over to bang hard. So uh, now they send Cortez, Hernandez Cortez, and the oh. conquistadors. We know that's a Spanish word for the conquerors. Yep. They bring the fucking conquerors out. Yep. That's that's your side of the family. You taking you taking pride in it. In, in the side of your family that has come to uh, fucking do the NWO New World Order, yep. and now you bragging about that. Yeah, looking at your ancestors that. as others, looking at them as savages, raping them, not not looking at them as fellow human beings. Yep, you're right. Go. Right, you're right. Seeing them the same way as I see animals. Go. Yep. So uh, Cortez and the conquistadors, they're they're. They're warlords from the old world, so they go back. So, so they go to the new world. They bring horses, which uh, North North America at the time it was not called North America. We called that Turtle Island. Turtle Island had horses. That's a true statement. But mm. Central America, you know, Aztecs, old, uh, uh, Toltecs, Olmecs, uh, Incas. Mayans, they never seen horses before. Mm. They didn't have horses down there. So they coming over with war dogs, some big ass fucking mastiffs, mm. war horses, some broad ass horses, cannons, fire sticks. Keep in mind, these people just fucking left uh, Asia. They just left Asia on the fucking Silk Trail. The Asians had fireworks. Mm hmm. They put some, you know, this, this this is the difference between their children and our children. Brother, if, brother, brother, radical Latino, mm-hmm. if your son go into a room with nothing but resources, he, your son going to come out with something to give his mother high honor, his mother and his father. Mm-hmm. He will come out with a cure to AIDS. Mm-hmm. He will come out with something to make this world just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. The fucking European, you know, the Asians, they're using gunpowder for fireworks for celebration for good shit. The European, he get a hold of fireworks, what does ass do? He make a fucking gun. He make yep. a weapon of mass destruction. Yep. Well, how, how about we started shooting something up in the sky? We shoot somebody in the face. Yep. See? They're, yep. That's the side of the family. You, you're so fucking proud of the, the savage side of your family. That's, mm-hmm. that's the side of your, you know... The, the real indigenous side of your family, they were good people. Yep. But the, the so-called uh, There's a th- uh, there was a, side of your There family? was a thousand-year peace. The indigenous people practiced a thousand-year peace. There was no war. You're right. 
good people. We good people over here. Over there, they fucking up. So now they bring, you know, what what these people, well, the, the Omex were gone by this time, but they called them fire sticks. Not only did they have guns, you would only shoot the gun one by one, just one bullet at a time. You, you, you didn't get automatic weaponry until after the Civil War. Mm. After after Abraham Lincoln, then, just after 18, 1863, the Civil War kicks off, you know, shortly thereafter, they invent automatic rifles. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, automatic handguns. Yep. You know, Wild Wild West. You know, you, you would see him holding, holding a revolver with a chamber, back, 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 you know, because mm-hmm. they keep pulling the hammer back really quickly, and, like, you know, you, know, you got to be quick on the draw. You know, take 10 pets. Take ten paces at home. That's when the fucking automatic revolver came out. Yep. So prior to that, you know, uh, you could only shoot one time. So not only did they have uh, rifles, but they had cannons as well. Mm. So they come over, uh, Cortez and the conquistadors, as warlords. But Cortez, he did some shit and fucked up. I don't know what he. This is on the island of Hispaniola. At this particular time, it's not the Dominican Republic. At this particular time, it's not even on Haiti. It's not Haiti at this time. It's still Hispaniola. You know, before the French got there, before anybody joined in, uh, in what is about to be the African slave trade, the Spanish came first. I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. Mm-hmm. So now, uh, Cortez and the conquistadors come over. And... Uh, uh, Cortez does some shit. I forgot what he did, but he he fucked up and lost his position and fired him. But before anybody could find out that he got fired, he took goddamn a whole fucking fleet and fleed. We out, bitch. We out. Mm. Heads heads west through the Gulf of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Where does he hit? Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula, right slap dab in the middle of Central America. So now, uh, uh, meanwhile, back in Europe. This gold bangle got everybody dick hard. Yeah. <laughs> so now, uh, you know, uh, old boy took them five ships. Now he's raping, pillaging, taking slaves uh, back to uh, back to uh, Europe. Mm-hmm. So now uh, he gives those slaves these Arawaks and Tainos. He gives these slaves because at the time they don't do the African slave trade just yet. But these are dark-skinned people. They're very dark-skinned. Yep. Wide nose, woolly hair, thick lips, full lips. So now, you know, they're just, they're, they're basically the same as the Africans. Uh-huh. So uh, give them to the Pope. Because keep in mind, the most religious people in this world is fucking uh, uh, black Baptists and uh, Spanish Catholics. Mm-hmm. But anyway, keep it, keep, keep it moving. It gives these people... These original people, and we're talking about them fucking beast savage ass Spaniards. Uh, these original people who are good people, they they are made slaves to the Pope, and the Pope's like, damn, this shit may work. This shit looks like it may work. The whole thing was looking good. So he says, uh, you know, we are going to enslave these people in the name of the Lord. Mm. That's why that's why slaves had to automate. A part of slavery was that you convert. Mm. You did not just become a slave and you as your ass worked. Your ass became a slave and you had to fucking uh, become a Catholic. Yeah, they had to convert you first. Yep. They had to convert you because the first slaves started out as the Pope's slaves. So now uh, they're seeing how the slavery thing is working. And who gets interested? Who was the first one to participate in the, in the African slave trade? Because they're going to Africa. The Portuguese. Mm. We're back in South America, brother. We're back in South America. Mm-hmm. Who is the very? Oh, there's more Latinos who are African than anywhere else. Bitch, why? Because the Portuguese were the first ones. The Portuguese and the Dutch were the first ones to get a jump on the African slave trade. Mm. That's why. That, I, I gotta walk you through history, and we gotta walk slow. That's why more are in more black people are in South America than anyone else in the world other than Africa. Mm-hmm. Black people ain't in, ain't, ain't in America like talk about. We're only 13% of the population approximately. Roughly. Yeah. Generally speaking. So now you're going to see all these black people down there because 
uh, Columbus never came to America in the first place. He, he was he, he was essential in South America because that's where these strongholds were at. So now the Portuguese start and kick off. So now back, I, I, I kind of explained that part. Let's go back to the island of Hispaniola. So now Cortez is over there, meanwhile, back in the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean, in the West Indies. Old boy gets fired. He, he uh, makes a break. He doesn't tell his team when he's been fired. He says, bitch, we out. So they all take, like, three warships, a hundred horses. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 uh. I, I, I don't know how to, you know, but they take a fucking, a little small army. A little small army. They go to the Yucatan. Yeah. Now, these people, they're good people over there that the Spaniards first encounter. They're good people. Yeah. They're good people, brother. But they ain't pussies. Mm-mm. They will fight your ass to the fucking bitter end. Are you playing with me? Mm-hmm. I'll scalp your ass. I will fucking kill you and eat your heart. <laughs> These people are not fucking around. The, 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 the people down, down in Central America were man eaters. Mm-hmm. If you fuck with us, you know, we're not fucking with you, but if you come and fuck with us, after I kill you, I will eat your heart because I'm not fucking playing with y'all. Don't come over here with that bullshit. When shit get ugly, we will make sure it get ugly. Let's be clear on that. Them people over there was fucking man eaters, so you better not go over there fucking around. So when, Con- when Cortez came over there with the conquistadors, they, they, they beat the dog shit out of them. Let's be clear. They beat the dog shit. He, that first initial fight, he loses what? 75% of everything he came over with. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's looking like Cortez is done. But here's the thing, brother. Cortez was done when he got fired. Mm. Cortez, he, 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 he knows he can't go back to the island of Hispaniola. He can't go back. Meanwhile, in the island of Hispaniola, where the fuck is Cortez at? Where the fuck are these boats at? Where are the horses at? Where's the militia at? He can't go back. I, I told his ass he was fired. Mm. He, he, he's no longer a conquistador. So, so he can't go back. So by the time he hits the Yucatan Peninsula, bitch, he burned all the boats. He Damn. burned they don't, Nobody knew he got fired. So he burned all the boats, and he told every nigga that came, all the conquistadors who came with Cortez, if they said, hey, we should go back, we might not win this war, he burnt all the boats. Damn. Bitch, we, none of us can go back now. We fight or we die. That's it. Mm. So they went and fought the first set of the indigenous people, and they kicked the dog shit out of them. Mm-hmm. Cortez and the Conquistadors lost 75, if not 90% of their stronghold militia. Now, this is the thing. The only reason that they held it down is because they were able to develop a fort. They set up on a high point of the village that they were going to attack. So they go to the, the high point. They get their cannons and everything. Keep in mind, in Central America, they have a certain fighting style. Mm-hmm. They have a certain fighting style. It's a, it's a, you know, me and you fight, and whoever wins, wins. We done. It ain't going to be no more fighting after that. Yep. Whoever wins the battle goes home and, you know, go licks his wound and collects his, bra- his bragging rights. Cortez, he couldn't fight that type of battle because he couldn't go home. So after they kick their ass, they lose 75 to 90% of everybody they came with. They held down that high point. Now, before they even got their asses kicked, they went down to the tribe and said, hey, we come in peace, we want to work with y'all, tell us where the gold is at. They said, fuck you. And then they started kicking their ass. But they were on a high point, they had the cannons. So even though they killed 90%, the 10% won't leave it. The 10% won't leave it, and they, and they were still banging them cannons. Mm. They, they, they was at, at the very least they was banging them cannons so now the tribe was like damn you know we kicked their ass and they didn't leave they, they've been able to hold it down for about a week at this high point damn fuck it 
send a diplomat over there. Send a diplomat. So, so the first tribe sends a diplomat. They said, all right, you know what, fuck it. Let's, let's fucking work together. Now, let's go back in history. Because the people that they go and attack, Cortez and the conquistadors attack the Aztecs. That's who they attack. Mm. Now, this is where you come in because you're like, yo, Crumb, go back, go back, go back. Now that we're talking, now that we finally got to the Aztecs, because the Mayans, I'm sorry, excuse me, the Incas, it's not really a lot to the Incas story. They came down there, they whipped the Incas as the end. Yeah. You know, so forgive me if I don't expound upon the Incas. It's just mm-hmm. not much to that story worth talking about. They were there, yeah. They had some shit going on prior to, to, to the other people coming, yeah. But the fucking, the codex, codex is the original word for book. Nobody could figure the fucking codex out. Yep, yep. They, um, they, they I think they, they uh, actually were the first civilization to actually do something about, like, um... Uh, 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 like, uh, was it? I, I forgot. I forgot the name of, um, of it, but it was like codes or whatever the case is. The first civilization. No, it, to was, be... it was. It was strings with dots in them. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that, and it was like, um, 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 not braille. It was something like. It... I, I mean, basically, because, because basically, it's like when you rub your finger across braille, and it's kind of like even the the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the Morris code. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's but what I, it was. It was just, it was, it was, was yarn with knots in them, and you know, nobody could ever break the fucking system. Yep. So you know, we can't say we've got the whole codex in front of us. We have the whole fucking book in front of us, and we can't read it. Yep. So, forgive me if I don't expound upon the Incans, because we we've yet to decode this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, people. Oh, I can't. I. I I can't decode the fucking hieroglyphics in Africa, in Egypt. Well, we still can't decode the Inca shit. <laughs> yeah. And the Inca shit was deep. Like, we didn't even understand how deep the Inca shit went until we fucking flew over there. Because keep in mind, they were up there in the fucking mountains with Al Parker. Yep. Yep. These niggas is living fucking a million miles above sea level. Yep. Nobody could even see this shit until we flew over this shit. Like, oh my fucking god, they got shit set up down there that you wouldn't even know. Yeah, like, you know, inside so walking, inside caves, inside the forest, all of that. No, they got they got uh, uh well yeah 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 yeah. There are definitely caverns in that thing. Yep, they got waterfalls that fall a fucking thousand feet down. The shit, it's some shit under there. No question about it. They got fucking pit holes. The shit just fall. Yep. 100 miles wide fucking pit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that in America, because they don't fucking dug up stuff from here, but the, 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 the ancient ones live fucking in underground fucking corridors. They go fucking 1,000 miles underground. Y'all niggas ain't ready. Y'all niggas ain't ready for the fucking Incans. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but the shit I'm talking about, it was like a fucking hummingbird. Mm. The shit was like a fucking 100 miles wide. So, like, from the ground, you didn't even know. You like, okay, you see the design. A fucking straight line. You see a road, but you don't realize it's a fucking hummingbird until you can fly over in a fucking uh, airplane, 100 miles above this shit, and look down like, oh fuck, that's a hummingbird. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they go down there, they kill the Incans. Incans are done. Story uh-huh. over. The real story is with the Aztecs and the Mayans because that's kind of where the drama is at. Because mm. at this time. There's an Aztec king. His name is Montezuma. Mm. If you go and listen to the, the 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 theme song to the the military, it will say, uh, "From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli." Yeah, and I don't know the whole song, but we talk about Montezuma. In the, in, the, in the military song or whatever this shit is called. So now, Cortez and the Conquistadors, they team up with a uh, tribe that can't beat them, even though they killed most of them off. Mm. Now, the tribe... Now, 
this is this is a European saying. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Is my friend. Yep. The original quote is an African quote. The friend of my friend is my friend. Mm. Mm. But Europe, so now the Europeans, you friends, right? the Europeans took it and flipped it and turned it into a negative thing. Damn. So now you and me friends. Yeah, I'm friends with radical Latino, but radical Latino is friends with a brother named radical Hispanic. So I'm like, listen, a friend of radical Latinos is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. it, have you not said that before? Of course, all the time, That's all the time, especially, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. Yeah, half of, half of my friends weren't originally my friends. It was just dudes I knew from from my friend you know what i'm saying like just say yo this is this is my brother right here oh yo what's popping you know like yeah that always happens always so when we say the friend of my friend is my friend that's not even like it sounds a little bit complicated but we we do that to this day yeah but we fail to realize how they manipulated our shit and whitewashed it so now it's it's, it's some fucking warlord evil shit because keep in mind Brother, we are good people. Mm -hmm. That side of the family is a bunch of savages. That's that Christopher. Yep. That's that Christopher side. Yep. That's that Christopher. <laughs> yep. So now they talk about the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they so 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 the tribe that Cortez and the conquistadors fi finally teamed up with. They said this is what the tribe says. We don't like the Aztecs. The Aztecs are collecting taxes. They're fucking power tripping. This shit is fucking bullshit, you know, but we can't defeat them. So Cortez and his couple of conquistadors like fucking listen, my full time job is being a fucking conquistador. I'm a, I'm a conqueror. Let's team up and we're going to fucking conquer the Aztecs. So it was like that. We're going to team up. So mm. now he looks like because he lost 90% of what he had initially, Looked like he lost the war, but it was just one battle, and he was able to win the war. So now he has the 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 intel, the layout of the land. They, matter of fact, the most fragile thing, the best thing that he had, was a translator. Mm. There was this there was this girl, and uh, she was sharp as a fucking tack. She was a fucking she would make. Einstein looks stupid mm. and um, she she was able to translate the language so now uh, she's she's you know Cortez and her are talking and she tells the people what Cortez is trying to tell them and you know this this is how Spanish first came about so now you know she's she's teaching her the, your first teacher brother keeping it humble your first teacher is your mother the mm -hmm. first teacher of, of of, of your mother tongue was a woman. You know, I, I, I need the family to, to digest that. Because as I, you know, the common theme within this whole conversation is our people, we good people, family. We good people. We mm -hmm. peaceful people. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we, don't do, we don't take shit from other people. You know, uh, we, 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 we are a smart people. We are a genius. These are narratives we don't hear enough. You hear about black and brown people being... What do black and brown what do black and brown people got in common? They tell us we are a dumb people. They tell us we are a poor people. They tell us that we are a downtrodden people. We we are a mighty people. And that's what the reality is, but they believe it in history and they won't tell our story. So I'm stumble uh, uh, so I'm sorry, that's my dyslexia. I don't want to say it. so I'm so humble. I don't know if it's not that I said stumble. No, nah, uh, no, nah, don't worry about it. I got it too, so you good. <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> so you know, uh, I'm so humbled that you have allowed me on the Radical Latino podcast yeah. to be able to give an account to hopefully, you know, make somebody look at who they are and what side of the family they should be proud of, you know. And this isn't crumb down, you know, a certain side of the family, but I want to tell it like it is because our families have been shaped by by rape culture, by European rape culture, yep. and it's a very hard pill to swallow. Yep. In terms of being proud about your heritage, it's 
it's a mixed bag and it's hard to deal with. Some good, some bad. You gotta roll, roll with the punches. So I'm not trying to down nobody and make because you didn't have a choice in the matter. Shit happens. Yep. So we gotta deal with the reality of what it was. So now that that girl is a translator. They go to the Aztecs and, and they initially go in peace. But it's a trap the whole while. Montezuma's over there. Um, but before I even get into that, hold on, let me check something. We've been on the line for about an hour. Yeah. We've been on the line for about an hour. Um, what I wanted to say is that um, we have to do a part two. Mm. In part two, I'm going to go back and tell you the original Aztecs and how it leads up to the moment where Cortez meets Montezuma. Mm. That's where we'll leave off on this time. And that's where we'll pick up in our part two. All right. The history and origins of Hispanic and Latin America, part two, Cortez meets Montezuma. Gotcha. Mm, brother Crumb, but, shit. But you have some more questions for me. I, and I know that. So let's leave that part, finish your questions, and I'll go in peace. All right. So please continue. What's your next question? Um... Shit. Wow, that was a lot of information, bro. Um <laughs> I just wanted to know uh the just tell us about the similarities between the pyramids of South Latin American and, and Africa. Because when I when I see the pyra- like, you know, the similarities, there in every black and brown cult, uh, culture and civilization there was always some pyramids there's no pyramids in in Europe whatsoever so that's why I I said that's why I'm like there has to be a connection here somewhere you know what I'm saying early on right. so can you expound a little bit more on that I do apologize because that is going into the artifacts and the artifacts are going to be pre Montezuma, ah. and I want to save that for the next one. Um, and I think you, and I think uh, there was a list, and you shared that with me. So I apologize. So I should have brought that up. One question that you had for me, and I think was towards the end, uh, was about African dance, which yeah. is post Montezuma. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. Because right now, we're going to see where the cultures align. And dancing, you know, but even even not only been dancing, but the music as well. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. With the drums and the and the trumpets and all that. Yeah, of course, of course. Like um, you got salsa. Definitely, definitely you know drum. what I'm saying. You know, and um, even even self defense. I, I, I'm about to slaughter the name. I apologize. Nah, but go ahead. Th- go there's ahead. This African style of dance. That is not N O T. Not N as in Nancy, O as an octopus, T as in Tom. Not, not a style of dance. It's a style of fighting. Oh, um, I know which one you're talking about. It was in Bear Africa. You, it was in Africa, and I'm then sorry, I'm, I'm, and then it went to uh, to Brazil, uh, Capoeira. That's it. Yep. Now, when we talk about them coming over, our people coming over here. We had to hide the African cult. You'd be like, come, the Spanish community is killing me. The Latino community is killing me. They don't know our African roots. Family, you had to hide your African roots. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't get mad at the people for doing what they had to do. The Spanish and Latin community has been hiding their African roots for a very long time, and they've had to do it. They did not have a choice in the matter. This is where the religion of Santa Maria, uh, Santa, Santa Maria comes from. Yep. It, it was voodoo. Yeah, Santeria. But they were yep. forced to become Catholics. Yep. They were practicing voodoo, but they were forced to become Catholics, and they had the African traditions in Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Don't get mad at the Spanish community for hiding their African roots. They had no choice. Family, I want to tell you, 
we are some good we are good people brother we are mm-hmm. a good people mm-hmm. and, and 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 forgive us if our children are 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 hiding their african roots but i taught him to do that because yeah. we didn't have a choice in the matter so now you have a fighting style but they can't let the people know that they're fighting so they hide it within dance mm-hmm. just like they hid the religion in catholicism mm-hmm. and this dance is called what brother can you say it again please? capoeira 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 yeah yeah like that capoeira now i'm about to take your ass to fucking asia if you look up capoeira there are four styles of capoeira brother do you know what the four styles are Nah, not really. Earth bending, fire bending, water bending. What? Wait. Earth earth bending, fire, fire bending, earth earth, earth fire, fire and water, wind bending. Wind, yeah. I, I'm, sorry, I, no, I, I'm sorry, air bending. Yeah. Earth bending, fire bending, water bending, air bending. Wow. Wow. Are you following me? Are you following me on YouTube? Crumb TV. Are you following me on Instagram? Crumb TV. Are you following me on Facebook? Crumb TV. Are you following the podcast? Snatched. Mm. I'm coming with some information for the family. And I'm telling you, don't don't believe me, family. Look it up. One of my first videos, when I started looking shit up, I start fucking connecting these dots, and I'm fucking, I feel like Neo in the Matrix when he took the red pill. Mm-hmm. This shit is fucking blowing my mind right now. What the fuck is going on around me? Yep. I felt, I was like, I was asleep. And then when I woke up, I was like, what the fuck? All this shit is fucking connected. The truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. So now they come down, they hide the dancing. I'm sorry, excuse me. They hide the fighting in a form of dancing. And there's four forms. And one form, now keep in mind, I'm sorry, brother, tell me again. What is the name of this Capoeira. dancing called again? Capoeira. Capoeira. Brother, do you know this is where fucking break dancing comes from? Yeah. Break dancing yep. is earth bending. There's one style of capoeira where they where all the moves are based off the ground. Mm-hmm. That's where break dancing comes from. Mm. Earth bending is break dancing. You heard it first right here on fucking God uh, uh, the, the the radical Latino. Mm. You heard it first, family. Right here on the radical Latino. Mm. That's just one style of fighting. Which became breakdancing, or what, or what we know through the cartoon called Avatar: The Last Airbender. What we know as earthbending. There's three other styles of capoeira, where it's based off the air, it's based off spirit or fire, and then the other one is based off water, where it's very flowing. Mm-hmm. It's, it, 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 it's, it's a very flowing motion. It's like tai chi and shit, right? God damn it, teach, brother. God yeah. damn it, teach. It's like Tai Chi, yeah. It's very flowing. This is, and, and, and I'm so glad that you said Tai Chi, because for the listening audience, family, I need you to follow us. Follow, don't just follow Crumb. Are you following the brother? Radical mm-hmm. Latino? We're talking about fighting. And the brother says, when this style of fighting in the form of dancing that's very flowish is like Tai Chi, mm-hmm. which is another style of fighting, mm-hmm. which is like dancing. Family, are you following us? Mm-hmm. Are you following the Radical Latino on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Are you following the Radical Latino on Instagram? The brother's fucking connecting the dots. Yep. Tell the people where they can find you. Family, you can find me on Instagram under crumb tv underscore my person that, that that's the kind of the, that's the business page you can also find my personal page on instagram crumb underscore snatcher underscore you can find me on facebook 
my, you know, it's just Crumb Snatcher. But the business page on Facebook is Crumb Snatcher at Crumb TV. Uh, you can find me on soultrustrecords.com. That's the website that is now uh, hosting Crumb TV. Uh, got to gotta get, you know, a little bit more independence. Got to get off these other platforms. But you can also find me on YouTube under Crumb TV. And my backup page is Branch of Knowledge. Uh, and um, my email is crumbsnatcher908, the, the, the uh, numerals, 908 at gmail.com. Um, I, I do advertising. And, uh, you know, if anybody wants, you know, I think I have, over, I think I'm looking at like 60,000 followers, something like that mm. across all the platforms. Across all the platforms, about 60,000. So if you want to mm. do advertising with me, you can just uh, email me at crumbtvads, A-D-S, crumbtvads at gmail. Uh, and that's basically everywhere I'm at, brother. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with my brother Crumb. If you guys want to support him or go to one of his pages and all that, all of that, all his information, his Facebook, his Instagram, where to support him, his Cash App, his PayPal, and all that. It's going to be in the description down below. If this is on the app, the, the podcast app, go to details or however you guys do to find the descriptions uh, of the of the episode on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? You guys can also find me at the radical underscore Latino underscore on Instagram and Twitter both at the same name you know what i'm saying and if you guys got any questions anything you guys want to add to the show or a- anybody who wants me to interview or whatever you know debate anything you disagree with like i don't like what you say you know this other bullshit <laughs> you know what i mean hit me up on instagram or twitter i'll definitely respond and I could serve you the good ass ass whooping, you know, if you if you want to disagree and just go on to no, nah, let me stop. No, I like we could, you know, we could talk it out. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm gonna catch you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember, this is part one, and just stay tuned for part two. Peace.